OK, so we're now going to learn about something called the modulus and the argument of a complex number. And this is where the argon diagram really comes into play because it helps you to visualize two of these properties really, really nicely. So I've got written over here, it says 4 plus 3i is plotted on an argon diagram. You can see it's 4 along and it's 3 up. And we've got that line drawing that doesn't have to be there, but it can be. Part A of the question says, what is its distance from the origin? So in other words, from here to here, what is the distance that we've got? So I'm going to add in um, a couple of bits on the diagram. We can see that along the bottom here, it is four long. And up the side, it must be three long. So very quickly, if you're going to want to work out the distance of the, the line from the origin, of the point from the origin, you can see that we're going to use Pythagoras here. So what we would do is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which we know is equal to 5. So its distance from the origin for this one is 5. And I'm going to say what this no, is known as in a second. The second thing that it asks about is what is its anti-clockwise angle from the positive real axis? So here's the positive real axis and the anti-clockwise angle, meaning it being measured in this direction here. So in other words, what is that angle? So I'm just going to quickly draw that triangle out again. We've got this triangle here, we're trying to find theta, and this is 3, and this is 4. Yes, we know the hypotenuse is 5, but we're just going to try and do it with these two values. Hopefully you can spot here that tan theta is equal to the opposite, which is 3, over the adjacent, which is 4. And so theta will be the inverse tan of 3 over 4. And it does say in radians here, so you're going to need to make sure that you're in radians. If you're not sure what radians are, I will link um, in the description um, to the year 2 pure playlist that describes what radians are. So we're going to do the inverse tan of 3 over 4. So I'm going to do the inverse tan of, oh, I'm in degrees, I'm just going to switch that to radians of 3 over 4. And the angle that we get is 0 0.64 radians. So that's 0 0.64. So the blue one that we've been talking about, this is known as the modulus, and the red one is known as the argument of that complex number. So I've written that down here. These are respectively known as the modulus, which you write with the complex number with these two lines either side of it, and the argument, which we write as arg with brackets and then the complex number in of a complex number. You've probably seen this already in the same way that we would use the magnitude of a vector. It's literally saying, what is the length of this complex number? What is the size of this complex number? Taking into account that it's got a real part and an imaginary part. And then the argument is describing how much it is moved as an angle um, from the positive real axis. And we describe this direction as the anticlockwise direction being positive and the clockwise direction as being negative. And we'll explore that a little bit more in a second. So what I've written in this red box is if z is equal to x plus i, y, then the modulus of z is just Pythagoras. You just do the square root of the x squared plus y squared parts that we've got here. The argument part's a little bit more complicated, and actually we're going to read through some of these things, but inevitably what we'll find is that just drawing a diagram will make this way, way easier. So the argument of z um, is the anti-clockwise rotation in radians from the positive real axis. So this little diagram here is reminding us that this is positive, because this is positive up here, and this is negative, always measured from the positive real axis. And a little bit of pi here is to remind us that we should be measuring this in radians rather than in degrees. So to find the argument of z, you do the inverse tan of y over x, so the imaginary divided by the real. You can see that over here, we did the imaginary divided by real. Um, and that's for the first and fourth quadrants. Um, but really, just drawing a diagram is going to be easiest for this. Um, this is the first quadrant and this is the fourth quadrant. And the argument of z is usually given in the range between minus pi and pi. Obviously, pi is inclusive here because of this inequality symbol that we've got. And this is known as the principal argument. But if you had an argument that was bigger than pi, you would be able to subtract 2 pi from it, which is 360 degrees, and it would be an equivalent argument that you've got there. So we're going to just do some really simple practice on this, and then we'll do some slightly trickier problems afterwards. So we're going to, for these four that we've got here, we're going to find the modulus and argument of them. I am going to do them manually, and then I'm going to show you how you can do this with a calculator. So for part A, I always, always like to have a quick sketch of these. So first of all, it's 5 plus 12i, so it's going to be 5 across and 12 up. So here it is. That means this bottom bit is 5 and this side bit here is 12. 
So the modulus of this one, the modulus of 5 plus 12i, whoops, is just going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. This one you should know off the top of your head, a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So it's just going to be 13. And if I'm going to find the argument, and you can see I can just open up my brackets here and say 5 plus 12i. Well, looking at the diagram, we're looking for this angle. It is going to be the inverse tan of the opposite which is the 12 divided by the adjacent, which is 5, that y divided by x. So let's just do that on the calculator. We can do the inverse tan of 12 divided by 5, and we get 1.176, 1.176. So I'm just going to confirm this. I'm going to just show you on the calculator how you can actually do this. You need to make sure that your calculator is in complex mode. If you have a complex mode on your calculator, let's just get this focused on here so it doesn't keep blurring in and out. So you'll see my calculator is in complex mode where it says A plus B I. So what you do is you go on your main menu, you press option to get to the complex section, which is F3. And then what you can do is you can type in the absolute value. This is the same as the modulus lines. You see those modulus lines pop up. And I'm going to type in 5 plus 12 I. You can either use I from this part of the menu or you can press shift and then zero, you'll see above zero, there's an I there. You'll see we get the answer 13. I'm also going to do the argument of brackets, 5 plus 12, and I'll use I from up here just to show you, and I'll press equals, and we do get the same thing of 1.176. So I'm not going to do these um, on the calculator again after this, I'm going to do them all manually, but you can use the calculator to check this. I would not advise just learning how to use the calculator, because some of the questions are going to have some unknowns in where you won't be able to type them in. You will have to be able to find the argument at the modulus manually because it may have, I don't know, the letter A or a letter B in one of these places. OK, let's go back to the good notes file. OK, so the next one that we've got here, we're going to do one, minus one plus I. So again, you should do a sketch for all of these. So it's minus one. Here is minus one plus I. So that's my i over there. Now, if I want to find the magnitude of this, so I'm going to do the magnitude of minus 1 plus i. It's just going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 2. And obviously, we don't change that from root 2. We just leave it in its third form there. And we're going to try and figure out what the argument of this is. Well, I'm hoping if we zoom on in this diagram, you can tell me that this angle, if this is 1 and this is also 1, you should tell me this is 45 degrees or pi over 4. Now if that's pi over 4 and the angle that we're trying to figure out is this one, you should be able to tell me that this angle is 3 pi over 4. So without even having to do that on the calculator or to actually do any calculations, we can figure it out that it is just going to be 3 pi over 4. So the argument of minus 1 plus i is 3 pi over 4. If you wanted to, you could have calculated this blue angle that you've got here, and then you could have used your reasoning skills to figure out that the angle from the positive axis is 3 pi over 4. OK, we're going to do the same thing for C. Now, C, this is why the diagram is going to be really helpful. So it's just minus 2i. Minus 2i is just going to be down here at minus 2i on the imaginary axis. It's just going to be this line that we've got. So you don't really need to do any Pythagoras of this, because if we're saying what is the length of that line, clearly it is just too long that you've got here. It's just two. If you were going to do Pythagoras on that, you would just be doing the square root of two squared, which is obviously just going to be two. So it's a bit of a waste of time. Again, you can also figure out the argument of this without really having to do any of the inverse tan stuff. You should be able to just tell this angle that we've got here is 90 degrees or pi over 2. But because we're coming in this direction, which is the negative direction, it's going to be minus pi over 2. So the argument of minus 2i is just going to be minus pi over 2. In other words, it's just landing on the negative imaginary axis. OK, so question D that we've got here, we're still going to draw a sketch for this. It's minus 1 minus 3i. And you always should do a sketch. I always, always, always do a sketch. So it's minus 1 over here and then minus 3i over here. So it's minus 1, minus 3, or minus 3i, however you want to do that. 
So we're going to do Pythagoras to figure out that line. I don't think we can figure that out in any other way. So it's minus 1, minus 3i, the modulus. It's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared. So that's 1 plus 9, or just root 10. And now we're going to figure out what the argument is. We're not going to dive straight into the argument. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on this, and we're going to think, can we figure out what this angle here is? So then we can reason and figure out what that angle is. So let's just quickly draw this triangle and so we can find out this angle. OK, drawing this, we're going to find out this angle. We have that it's one across and three down over here. So to find out what theta is, we know that theta would be the inverse tan of the opposite divided by the adjacent. So that is going to be the inverse tan of 3, 1.249. But we don't want that bit. We want to know what this angle is here. Let's just call this one alpha. So we can tell alpha is going to be 2 pi, not 2 pi, excuse me. This angle in is 180 degrees, or pi. It is going to be pi minus theta, which is pi minus 1.249. So let's go on to the next line, and we're going to do pi minus the answer, which is 1.893. 1.893. So we know that this angle is 1.893, but we need to say what the argument is. So the argument of minus 1 minus 3i is going to be this angle but negated because it's coming in the negative direction. So it's minus 1.89 or minus 1.893, depending on what the question would be asking for. So I didn't use any of these rules that they said down here of just um, of saying about the first and fourth quadrants for this bit here. I actually just wanted to draw a diagram because it helped me reason with what was going on so that I could figure out what the argument was. Figure out the angle you know, subtract from pi, and then decide whether it's going to be positive or negative, depending on whether it's landing in the top half for positive or the bottom half for negative. So we're going to do one here together, and then we're going to do a much trickier problem before you embark on the next exercise. OK, so this first question, it says that z is equal to 2 minus 3i. And we're first of all going to just show what z squared is equal to. So it's going to be 2 minus 3i multiplied by 2 minus 3i. 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, 2 times minus 3i is minus 6i. Minus 3i times 2 is minus 6i. And then minus 3i multiplied by minus 3i, that is 9i squared, which is minus 9. So 4 minus 9 is minus 5. And the minus 6i and the minus 6i is minus 12i, just as we wanted. The next thing it wants us to do is to find the modulus of z squared. In other words, the modulus of minus 5 minus 12i. Now, although it's pretty obvious what this is going to be, I still want to draw a quick sketch of what this will look like. So we're going to go minus 5 over here and minus 12 down here. You could put the i next to it if you want to. So we're going to be finding out the length of that line. So we're just doing Pythagoras. We don't need to worry about the fact that there's a negative and a negative because when they get squared, they're going to go anyway. So it's a 5 squared plus 12 squared, all square rooted. And it's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So when you put that in your calculator, you will get 13. Now it wants us to find the argument of z squared. In other words, the argument of minus 5 minus 12i. So it's going to be really similar to that question we were just doing. We're going to actually find out what this angle here is as theta. We can then call this one alpha, and then we'll reason from that stage. So I'm going to begin by drawing this triangle to help me figure out what that theta is. So let's quickly draw that over here. There's theta. It's going 5 along and 12 down. And so theta will be the inverse turn of the opposite divided by the adjacent. I can just leave that on my calculator. I don't even really need to calculate that one. And so alpha, which is the one that I've got over here, is going to be pi minus that. So it's going to be pi minus the inverse tan of 12 over 5. And so the argument is going to be the negated version of alpha. So I'm just going to figure out what alpha is on the calculator. So I'm going to do pi 
minus the inverse tan of, did I say 12 over 5? Yeah, 12 over 5. So it's 1.966, or I'm just going to do it to three significant figures, 1.97. So alpha is 1.97, which means that the argument of z squared is going to be minus 1.97, because it's coming around in the negative direction from that bit there. The last thing it wants us to do is to show z and z squared on a single argand diagram. So I shall do that down here. Here's my argand diagram. Z is 2 minus 3i, so it's going to be 2 minus 3i. Let's make that a little bit smaller. So it's 2 minus 3i. That's my z. And then I've got 5 minus 12i. Minus 5 minus 12i. So here's my minus 5. And here's my minus 12i. And that's my z squared. If you want, you can have these lines in here and here. Notice how it's not exactly drawn to scale, it's just to give you an indication of what is going on. So I'm going to do a much harder question in the next video, but you might like to start on some of exercise 2b and then come back and have a look at the much trickier question that I'm about to do.